wisdom and love within my heart, wisdom and love within my thoughts, wisdom and love within my words. Welcome. I'm Sister Who. Today I wanted to address the question word, what if? Um, actually two words, I suppose. In the introduction, um, what if is depicted with me standing in the middle of this giant chessboard because there, there's so many wonderful metaphors in that because for those who are familiar with the game of chess there's 16 pieces and the the front row are called the pawns the back row uh, you have let's see the rook the knight the bishop the king and the queen uh, some people, I had one person who suggested that it was uh, primarily a game about war, and I said, well, not necessarily, because there's also the sense in which everything is a part of everything, everything's interconnected. And so in dealing with the black and white pieces on the chessboard, it's also a question of dealing with the dark and light sides of oneself, uh, desirable qualities, undesirable qualities, uh, hidden things and known things. Uh, dark is not always bad and light is not always good. They're just representations of different sorts of understandings. But in asking the question word what if is the awareness, the complex broad awareness that the movement of any piece could change the entire outcome of the game. Uh, and to have that many pieces all at the same time creates that many possibilities and that much potential because of course in the game you're playing with uh, a, with another player and so any choice you make with any one of your pieces could elicit any one of just as many responses from the other player and so each person or each player contributes something and then the other contributes a response, and then a, a response to the response, and so on. And that's where the question, what if, gets horrendously complex, because the it's not just what happens if I move this one piece, it's what happens if I do this series of moves in response to that series of moves by the other person. And of course, if you change the series at any point, you change the outcome because you change the other person's responses. And so what if becomes this fascinating dance where you're never quite sure who's leading and who's following. Um, and according to what criteria we decide who's the winner and who's the loser. And what does it really mean to be a loser anyway, other than that you accomplished a very uh, defined uh, you know, in the case of chess, the, the game is won by essentially uh, trapping uh, the king so that the king cannot move or, or, or there is no way to prevent the king, the piece labeled the king, from being taken uh, or uh, eliminated from the board because the game is not allowed to continue if either side doesn't have a king. It's, there are rules set up for the game, not because uh, has to be this way and this is supposed to mean some have some higher indication for how your life is to be lived or what's right or wrong but as a way of shaping in a minimal sort of way the interaction between the two players the two players who are expressing themselves through the 16 pieces and of course life situations get even more complex than that when you consider that every situation any of us ever encounter in our places of employment, uh, if we're in college, if, at our local, uh, at a local store, in our churches, uh, in our synagogues, in you know whatever, even out on a hiking trail in the wilderness, in whatever religious or social setting one finds oneself, as many people as there are there, each of those is a contributing element. And you consider that at a football game, for example, there may be thousands of people. That means there's literally thousands of possibilities for what could happen there in terms of people's specific individual experience. Because any one of those thousands of people could dramatically affect your experience. By putting something in your path or giving you something to which to respond, 
that is not at all what you expected to find there. You know, someone might go to the theater and see a totally anomalous person sitting in the next row uh, and wonder, you know, who that person is, where they came from, why are they here. You know, perhaps if it's a different sort of play, we get partway through the play and this anomalous person suddenly jumps up and runs up on stage. And then perhaps most of the audience would guess that, oh, that person is part of the play, just hidden within the audience in order to create a unique theatrical experience. So there is the what if that always hints at, well, not always, sometimes hints at a decision-making process. What if I do things differently? What if I try something I've never tried before? What if I interpret this person differently than I've ever interpreted them before? What if the person I think is an adversary, I, I deliberately, carefully, wisely, not recklessly or carelessly, what if the person I think is an adversary I treat as a friend? Will that bring out something different in that person that they would not have otherwise shown me? Um, or will they confirm that they really are the person I don't want to include in my social circle because they don't know how to have good relationships? 